From Fort Lauderdale, Florida, this is NAB Show Live. Ryan Salazar here with Broadcast Beat Magazine. We have a special guest all the way from California at Quantum Corporation, Jeff Stedman, Senior Vice President of Scale Out Storage Solutions. How are you doing, sir? Very good, thank you. So, uh, so you're here all the way from California to, to talk about the you know, best practices in storage environments. Um, if you think about uh, the media and entertainment industry, there's render farms, uh, the broadcast space, you know, you've got uh, folks that are managing playout systems and asset management, things mm -hmm. like that. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, certainly one of the industries that has a huge reliance on storage is media and entertainment, especially as we've seen workflows evolve from, you know, analog stream-based workflow, video workflows to file-based workflows. So all those files need to be captured, stored, worked with with different applications and then managed and archived and and all of that process we call workflow uh, all that process requires storage that is optimized for the different tasks that that are you know that the media companies want to do um, and so we see a huge reliance on storage we see reliance on storage performance um, but at the same time we see a big a big concern about storage costs right and, and media companies really want to find a storage infrastructure that allows them to optimize for both performance when they need it, because there's times in the workflow where you, you have to make the investment to get the performance, but then you also want to minimize that to the point where when I'm finished with my work, I want to be able to store that finished content on, on lower cost storage for long term. Now, and so, you know, you, you think of the render environment and like a motion picture facility, Sony Pictures Entertainment or something like that. Um, you know, they, they're, they're clearly, I would assume, still using spinning disk in most of those environments, right? Yeah, a lot of the, the media workflows can still take advantage of spinning disk, and spinning disk has the capability for delivering video uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in an acceptable manner. Um, certainly one of the new technologies hitting the storage market is Flash. And we're looking at how does Flash impact these workflows. But today, for, for video, which tends to be very sequential data, it's more bandwidth oriented, we can architect storage solutions with spinning disks that are able to deliver the performance and, and still be less expensive than Flash. Now, that said, there are changes happening, and there's new workflows evolving all the time where, where the benefits of Flash, which is higher performance and higher random performance, especially with small files, uh, where Flash could be a, an interesting solution. Things like rendering, as you mentioned, the animation and visual FX market. We're even seeing certain customers who are really pushing the envelope in terms of high resolution, you know, 8K and you know, those kinds of, of workflows where I just have an immense amount of bandwidth and performance required out of storage. And Flash, although still relatively expensive compared to spinning disk, Flash could be the, or is, the technology that allows that work to happen you know, even faster than, than what you could do with spinning disk. Okay, now is, uh, you know, you hear about some hybrid environments even too, where some folks are using, you know, solid state and, and even right. spinning disk in the same exact chassis. Yeah, yep, yep, you'll see that. We have a, a hy hybrid product as well, that um, a, lot of, a, a lot of storage architectures today are a mix of both uh, flash for certain things and spinning disk for other things. And, and that's really one of the other trends that I think is, is happening within the media and entertainment industry is when you, when you look at a workflow for media, there's a life cycle to that content. There's, there's a time in that workflow where I absolutely need the best performance I can get. And flash or some combination of flash and spinning disk is the perfect solution for that part of the workflow. But once I finish that work, I don't want to keep building out that particular part of my storage because that's expensive. Oh, sure. And so I want to be able to then migrate that content to other, what we think of as tiers of storage or other types of storage that are lower cost but still have the kind of accessibility to content that a media company needs. So we're really starting to see the emergence of tiered storage solutions that have very high performance flash or spinning disk at one end then maybe object storage for nearline or, or secondary storage, and then maybe tape or even the cloud as potential places to, to archive content for long term. Because in media, again, that, that content has value forever, right? And so I don't want to ever throw it away, and I don't want to put it in some place where I don't have access to it. Because if I don't have access to it, 
I have no way to remonetize it. It doesn't have any value, right? Okay. So, so what you want is to have these different tiers of storage, but have them all tied together in a way that I can get access to that content. All right, and so you think about getting access to stuff fast, and this is this ties in really well. So everybody talks about the big mysterious cloud. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys have Q Cloud. Yep. Um, and so how does that integrate with your storage solution? And, and I think that maybe it'll kind of show people how potentially the cloud could be used in certain yeah, environments. Yeah, the cloud is you know, certainly a hot topic and, and people are looking at the cloud as a place to incorporate into their environment uh, because they don't have to invest CapEx, right? It's all an OpEx model. You pay as you use it and, and it's, a, it's a place where my content is also perceived to be pretty safe, right? And, and so the important thing though is that you don't want to set up a cloud storage capability and have it be separate from your workflow, right? There, it, the benefit you get to using any of these different types of storage is when you can tie them all together. And so for us, it's very important uh, to be able to integrate the cloud into the workflow, just like we integrate tape or object storage or our high performance storage products. So um, that happens through software mm -hmm. and, and we have a technology we call Storenext which provides the kind of data management for migrating data to these different types of storage, including the cloud. And we have a cloud product called QCloud, which is, um, integrates in Amazon storage into the workflow in a way that the customer doesn't have to think about or the user doesn't have to think about where is my content and, oh, it's off in the cloud, I have to go somewhere else to go get it. They simply go to their standard file interface, they'll see the files, if the file's in Amazon, Stornex will bring it back automatically. Oh, very cool. And, and to circle back around, you know, getting projects quickly, working on stuff very fast, uh, on the local network side. So, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, today are seeing 10 gig -y. Uh, You know, fiber is still extremely popular, especially, yep. in, especially in animation environments. Uh, iSCSI was a big thing years ago. That kind of faded away a little bit. Um, could you talk about maybe some of the... Yeah, the you're, you're right. The, the, uh, in, in many of the media facilities that, that we see, there's a mix. And um, you know, certainly there's, there's fiber channel for some workloads because of its performance characteristics. And as you mentioned, Ethernet continues to improve. And we see a lot, a lot of Ethernet uh, connected clients in a facility. I think one of the important things is for the storage environment to be able to support both and to be able to allow some users to access the content through fiber channel, if that's their preferred mechanism, and allow other users to access that same content in the same file system through Ethernet. And um, you know, we just announced a product we call Excellus, which is our new uh, high performance storage product, but one of the key characteristics of Excellus was the fact that we've unified that access. We, we now allow both uh, Ethernet clients and fiber channel clients to share the same file system without any gateways, without any additional hardware that, that would have been required in the past. So, so we're, we're trying to embrace that trend of, of supporting multiple uh, protocols, and, um, but, but certainly you're going to see more and more Ethernet come into these uh, into these environments for sure. And, and of course, you guys are going to be at the 2016 NAB show, Absolutely, right? yeah. Okay, so we'll certainly chat there about lots of storage solutions. But again, Jeff Stedman of Quantum Corporation, thanks for spending some time with us, sir. You bet, thank you.